Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Friday Night, Young at Heart, featuring nursery rhymes, story songs, poems, Mother Goose, Aesop's, Fables, Lewis Carroll, Limericks, Larks, Epics, stories of the great operas, and such, to keep us all young at heart. I'm Father James DeLucio. You find me back in the Rectory's Library here in New York City, the Rectory of the Paulist Fathers here in New York City. And tonight you are going to hear the compelling conclusion of one of the stories of the Arabian Nights, this one being the story of the talking bird, the singing tree, and the golden water. And so we have a very slight, small, shallow recap. There's a emperor, the emperor of Persia, no less. His beautiful wife who came from poverty, her sisters who were jealous of her, the emperor and the empress, she gives birth three times, but the sisters acting as a midwife in jealousy say that their sister has given birth to a puppy, a kitten, and a log. Well, the emperor believes them, and so does the poor princess because she's knocked out after each birth. And so he has her put into a shack at the very base of a great mosque of the great city where they live. And um, she's dressed back in her rags because she and her sisters came from poverty. And people have to scowl at her and call insults at her and a whole host of terrible things because she dared to give birth to a puppy, a kitten, and a log. But the children lived and the sisters put them in baskets and sent them down the river and they were adopted unbeknownst to the emperor or the empress uh, by his very kindly lead official of his army. He and his wife longed for children and lo and behold within two and a half years they have three children of their own because they had a lovely little cottage, more than a cottage actually, along the banks of the river and they found all three children and brought them up with every advantage a child could possibly want matching even what they might have had as children of the emperor and the empress. An excellent education. All three, two boys and a girl, studied in all the great arts, mathematics, science, music, fencing and archery. Yes, even the young girl. So uh, they grow up, but the adopted mother dies early on. The devoted father, the official, um, dies once they're all young adults capable of caring for themselves and leaves this beautiful castle and all its riches and this magnificent, uh, magnificent acreage of land and gardens beautiful to them. Now, the young woman is meticulous in everything, as are the two young men, and uh, the castle is furnished with everything you could possibly want until the young woman finds out that there are three things that would make their castle perfect, and that is a talking bird, a singing tree, and the golden water. We sent, last time, we sent the two brothers out in search of it. Both of them have never returned, and the young woman decides to go out herself, find out what's happened to her brothers, and she herself will retrieve the singing bird. No the talking bird, the singing tree, and the golden water. So as you recall, it's treacherous. It's a long journey. And after a very, very long journey, when you're already fatigued, you come to the base of a cliff, mountainous region, and there is a poor man there who gives instructions, telling people, don't bother, don't climb this cliff. Yes, there is a talking bird, a singing tree, and golden water, but don't bother. Hundreds and hundreds of brave, stout young men, some royalty, some officials of the armed guard, etc., etc., 
They none have returned, they have all perished. Because as you climb this most treacherous mountain and its ragged cliffs, there are boulders upon boulders upon boulders, and the boulders have the spirits of all those who have died. And they call out to you, telling you, go back, go back. And then they call you all kinds of names, similar to what they were saying to the empress herself over there at the base of the great mosque. Uh, how terrible you are, how foolish, how unequipped for the task, etc., etc. You don't deserve anything, a lot of negativity, and worse, and such. So, <sighs> And you're never to look back once you start up the cliff. But evidently, most of them have. And they've turned into the boulders. And no one knows how on earth they will ever be seen again. So this bright, brilliant, actually, young woman, again, astounding for a story that's over a thousand years old. The protagonist is a woman. Take note of that. Women, young girls boys and men as well. So she knows right away what she can do. She tells the old man, well, I'll just stuff cotton in my ears and their terrible words and telling me to go back. It won't bother me. In all my years, says the old man, no one has ever thought of such a thing. Amazing. So that's what she does. She starts the treacherous climb she has the cotton in her ears. And we know that they're all calling out uh, foul words, putting her down, mocking her, and then all the time telling her, look back, look back, knowing, of course, that she must not look back. So she does. She reaches the top of the, the, of the cliff, which turns out to be a beautiful um, plateau. And lo and behold, there in a cage hanging from a tree is the talking bird. So the talking bird bows to her and says how in awe he is of her who is able to accomplish a task that no man has ever accomplished, and he is now her slave. So she asks, well, tell me about this singing tree. And he says, well, it's over there. And she says, well, this is huge. I can't cut it down, et cetera, et cetera. He says, no, just break off a branch and plant it in your beautiful garden and it will grow and it will sing. And then the golden water, he tells her where that is too and she's too. Take a, uh, there's a pitcher nearby, go figure, and gather up a pitcher full of this golden water and uh, she can make her way home. But she says, wait, one more thing. I want my brothers back. And so lo and behold, you just sprinkle this golden water on the boulders and the rocks of the cliff as you descend, and each one returns to the human being that they were before. Wonderful story, isn't it? So she not only finds her brothers, but she releases all the men. Again, they were all men, foolish boys, uh, <laughs> um, from their captivity. Isn't that great? So the story's not over. So they go home. And they resume their life uh, together. All the other men who were captured into boulders have gone out back to their lands and villages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they, they go about their routines. And the three of them go hunting together. They're each um, in his or her own way. Excellent archers. Um, and, oh my goodness, again... This is a thousand years ago, but they catch all these bears and these lions, and they have all these beautiful, magnificent rugs and stuff, appalling by today's standards, but hey, you know. So they have all this, and one day the sister stays home, and the two go out, and who, who can you imagine they meet but the emperor himself, who is enjoying the hunting in his land. And he's so impressed with these young men that he says, you must come to my castle and visit me and pay me homage, of course. But I will, in turn, I'm so impressed by your skills and your intelligence and your language. You speak so eloquently that um, I must have you entertain me. So they say, well, well, we'll go, but we first have to ask our sister's permission because we're three 
bonded together and we never do anything without a full consultation of, get this, our sister. So the king is generous in spirit and that's his reputation, uh, although not so much with his wife. Anyway, he indulges the, the young men and they go back and then he says, come to me tomorrow with her permission to come and see me. And uh, they go home and they forget to tell her that they met the emperor because they're so grounded in their true nature and their humility. They're not that impressed that they've met the emperor, you know. He's just another person like themselves. So... He sends them back the next day and then the next day and then they go and he's so impressed and now he really must meet his the sister because the young men talk about her beauty and her intelligence and her gifts so, of archery and wrestling <laughs> and music and science and such. So he comes, of course, to the place and he is astounded because this head of his military, he had no idea. Um, perhaps from the officer's wife, or who knows where they got all this money, but the castle is, is almost in size and stature matching that of the emperor himself, and he's just awestruck with it, but even more so, of course, by the beautiful, beautiful young woman who is the sister to the two brothers. And so enamored, he just gazes upon her until, until he hears the talking bird who says to him, you fool, you listened to those wicked sisters of your wife, you fool, you placed your wife in a shack. These are your children and hers. And who gives birth to a puppy, a kitten, and a log, except for a dog, a cat, and, well, a tree? <laughs> so he's astounded, but he knew there was something in these kid, young people that just appealed to him. So uh, in the long run, he takes them all home. He releases his wife. Uh, from her shack, they're all reunited. Because, and to celebrate, the singing tree just goes into arias. And the birds all come around and join and sing in harmony and counterpoint. And they get the most beautiful concert ever. And, oh, of course, that golden water, I didn't tell you, was placed in a bowl in the middle of the garden. And it sh shot up and the most magnificent designs in this fountain, though it never has to be replenished at all. Oh, you don't ever drink it though. <laughs> but it makes beautiful designs, sort of like what you find in Las Vegas and those singing fountain things that they have. So there you go. That is a very condensed version. There are a lot more details than I chose to share with you, but you have now heard and now you know one of the thousand stories of the Arabian Nights, this one being the story of the talking bird, singing tree, and the golden water. Oh, and of course, what happened to those two sisters? Off with their heads, as is common in these tales. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. And tune in next Friday night for Young at Heart. God bless.